1918, the end of the First World War. Out of the ashes of conflict came extraordinary advances in technology, such as the tank, the aircraft carrier, and the modern flamethrower. While inventions of this ilk would see extended use during World War II, Vietnam, and the James Bond franchise, something else emerged during the years 1914 to 1918 that we still use to this very day. Uh, words. And while some of these words are unique to American English, some to British English, and some common to both, not all are technological in nature, tank notwithstanding. In fact, the Great War gave us great words of surprising diversity, from fashion to social class to delectable swear words. And so prepare for heavy artillery as I bombard your defenses with seven British and or American English words that were coined during World War I. While this style of coat existed prior to the war, the name we now give to it did not. Today, no more commonly as a high street fashion item and the garment of choice inside the Matrix, the trench coat was worn in the trenches by British soldiers during World War I, and as such, the first instance of the two words in unison is first found from 1916. You have to wonder then what name was given to it before then. So too, with our next entry. Prior to 1917, there did not exist a word that exactly described the notion of blending into one's natural surroundings to hide oneself from the enemy. The word camouflage, entering the English language via the Parisian slang camoufleur, changed all that. In August 1917, the American magazine Popular Science Monthly had this to say, Until recently, there was no one word in any language to explain this war trick. Sometimes a whole paragraph was described to explain this military practice. Hereafter, one word, a French word word will save all this needless writing and reading. Camouflage is that new word, and it means fooling the enemy. Of course, even then, the enemy didn't always take human form. Those keeping score at home will recall that cooties featured in my previous Distant Words video, which makes sense because cooties tends to spread. For the uninitiated, however, prepare to have your mind completely and utterly a little bit blown. This chiefly American English word was not originally American at all, but was coined by a group of gentlemen clad in trench coats. That's right, you see, cooties, in the later sense of a fictitious childhood disease, got its start in life as slang for body lice and was first used by British soldiers from 1917. Given the evident magnitude of this revelation, please take a minute or two to rid yourself of the following. While the term shell shock has developed a more figurative definition in recent years, it was nonetheless another product of the First World War, where it was used to describe psychological disturbance caused by prolonged exposure to active warfare. First attested from 1915, the word shell in this sense refers to the metal casing found on grenades. Shell shock, a condition largely misunderstood at the time, later took on a broader definition and evolved into what we now know as post-traumatic stress disorder. A reminder, if ever there was one, that frontline combat is anything but the following. Used these days to describe prison, the job of a professional footballer, and the life of an average cat, the word cushy fell into use in 1915 via the Hindi word kush, meaning happy, healthy, and basically this dog. Upon entering the English language, it joined other Hindi-inspired words, including yoga, looter, and cummerbund, the latter of which falls in line with not only cushy, but our penultimate entry. Amazingly, the current precise definition of posh, the quality or state of being elegant, stylish, or upper class, did not exist until 1914. In that very year, in his book, The British Army From Within, E. Charles Vivian had this to say, The cavalryman, far more than the infantryman, makes a point of wearing posh clothing on every possible occasion. Posh being the term used to designate superior clothing, or articles of attire other than those issued by and strictly conforming to the regulation. Exactly how the word came about is a matter of some dispute, with some believing it evolved from thieves slang for money. The notion that it was derived from the acronym of Port Outward Starboard Home, in reference to the accommodations of wealthy Brits travelling to India, yields absolutely no evidence and is therefore most likely this. Chiefly, an American English phrase still widely used to mean nonsense, foolish talk, frightful bollocks. Bullshit, as a noun, is first attested from 1915. And, such as bullshit's dramatic story, you might think my telling of it to be a fairly good definition of the word itself. But the truth is, the shorthand version, bull, meaning exactly the same thing, was actually coined in 1914, with bullshit emerging from it a year later in the most prolonged bout of constipation the world has ever seen. What's more, the verb bullshit, as in to bullshit someone, wouldn't arrive on the scene 
until 1942, just as the world was embroiled in its second round of global bullshit. And so, in the event of World War III, the US military had better have the adverb bullshitly ready to go at a moment's notice. Thank you for watching this episode of Distant Words. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and if you'd like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.